Welcome to Intro Psychology Unit 5. In this unit, we'll be talking about the consciousness and all different levels and types of altered consciousness. So let's jump right to it. What you can see here in my background in this unit is an iceberg. And that's because the iceberg is commonly used as a metaphor for our mind. That is the tip of the iceberg, the part we can see, but also known as the smallest part of the iceberg, is considered to be a metaphor for our consciousness. And that's what we're currently thinking of. In comparison, the part of the iceberg that just lies just below the surface of the water that we could see from a boat, that's considered the pre-conscious. And so that's considered to be part of the consciousness that we're not currently thinking of, but that we could look into and see and understand and remember with a little bit of effort. And then deep down into the darkness of the deep waters would be considered our unconscious. And so that is considered to be the parts of our mind that are buried and that are hidden and that are much harder to us for us to access. Now, according to this metaphor, there might be a word that you're used to seeing that's not here, and that would be the subconscious. And so for the purposes of this unit, we're going to stay away from the term subconscious. That's sometimes used interchangeably with unconscious, but sometimes used interchangeably with the combination of unconscious and preconscious. And so subconscious could mean both levels below the water, but I like to go a little bit more specific with it and break it down to conscious, preconscious, and unconscious. So let's focus on these three levels of the big iceberg in a little bit more detail right now. So in terms of the consciousness or what is at that peak of the iceberg, this is what's really on our mind stage at any given moment. You can think about this as a stage where top dancers and musicians can play or even about like a spotlight. But what's important to understand is that our stream of consciousness can only focus on one thing at a time. Even when we're multitasking, what's happening in our mind is there might be two stages in our mind, but we are only shining the spotlight on one of the stages at a time. If you are listening to class and texting a friend, it's important to understand your mind, your consciousness goes from texting your friend and back to class and back to your friend and back to class. It can't be on both those things at one point in time. And so even when we're multitasking, we constantly have a spotlight darting around into different members of the orchestra. And so I keep going back to the stage metaphor, and that's because for many of us, we can visualize things in our mind. You might be visualizing parts of a movie or visualizing written words in your notes, but not all of us do visualize things in our minds. Some of us have a different way that our consciousness manifests. You might not have a visual stage, but you might have an audible sort of consciousness to your mind or words, or maybe it's just thoughts and you, don't, you can't really have an auditory or visual component to it. That's fine too. But what we're aware of is that what you are currently attending to or what's in your mind's eye is very limited to one thing at a time. And so this might be something that you're seeing or feeling or remembering or deciding, but it was one thing. We really do have a one track mind, if you will. Now, what can be on that mind stage could be something that comes from within or from outside of our body. And so for that, we talk about exterioception and interioception. So let's dive into exterioception first. For exterioception, what we're talking about is things that we are conscious of, but have their origins from outside the body. And so these are our external stimuli. These are things that are coming from outside our body. Like if you hear or see a siren, if you feel rain or feel a wind chill, or if you're eating something delicious. You think back to unit four and cessation of perception, this would really be stuff that our sensory organs are intaking and transducing. So these are things that our body is interacting with in the environment and in the world around us. In comparison, interoception refers to internal stimuli. Now this can get a little bit gray. There's some things that we definitely know have their origins from within inside our body, our memories, the decisions we're making, our emotions, that sort of stuff can happen without any external stimuli. If you're in a sensory deprivation chamber and you're recalling memories from your childhood, that is definitely an internal stimuli. No matter where you are and what time of day it is, you can think back to the past and recall certain memories or play a song in your head that you recall from another day. That would be an internal stimuli. But then there are some things that are also interoception that are a little bit more nuanced. And this could be understanding that you have a sense of hunger. That's coming from within your body, not from without. It's about a lack of hormones or a loss of lack of food in your stomach. And so that would be interoception as well. 
if you have the sensation that you're feeling very hot. Well, that is complicated because you might be feeling that in relation to the external world, but if it's nothing to do with what's going on in terms of the room temperature, if you feel hot, you have a hot flash, you're going through something hormonal, that'd be considered an internal stimuli. But we can see, we're starting to see some gray areas here. For instance, if you have a sore throat because you have a bacterial infection, is that external or is that internal? Is that exteroception or interoception? Well, that is debatable. And lots of different psychologists say, maybe you're feeling that because of the bacteria in your throat. Or maybe you're feeling that because of the immune response from your own body. So in those cases, those would definitely be great. I personally wouldn't ask about anything that gets really nitty gritty. Like um, when you feel itchy, is that a real itch because there's something on your skin or is it just that, that you have dry skin? I wouldn't go into those details. But definitely interoception is something that happens in your mind. Another thing we have to think about in terms of interoception is metacognition. So cognitions are our thoughts, our memories, our decisions, but metacognitions are our thoughts about our thoughts. So if you think about how you're thinking and if you're studying your own consciousness, that's an interoception, that's an internal stimuli because you're thinking about your own thinking. You're thinking about how you remember things and how you make decisions. And that type of metacognition is definitely coming from within. Now, in addition to talking about stimuli that comes from external sources or internal sources, it's important for us to realize that our consciousness can vary in many other ways. And one very important way is to understand the difference between our explicit and our implicit consciousness. I know there's a lot of X and in in this session, but explicit consciousness is consciousness that you are uh, shaping intentionally. This is consciousness that is through a controlled process. You're being very mindful. So this could be the idea that if you're learning yoga or ballet and you're listening to instructions to hold a certain posture or move a part of your body in a certain way, you are focusing your consciousness on that and is going where you intend for it to go. If you're listening to a lecture and you're paying attention exactly to what the lecture's on and you're focusing your consciousness onto the learning and onto the content of your lesson, that's explicit consciousness. If you're meditating and you're not trying to focus your consciousness on anything whatsoever, but you just want to see where your mind is going and you're intentionally following your mind, that could also be explicit conscious. And if you're driving a car and you're paying attention to the rules of the road and you stop when there's a red light and you go when there's a green light, that's explicit consciousness. So it's all things that we have intention behind and that we are shaping and controlling where our consciousness is. In comparison, implicit consciousness is mind wandering. It's absent-mindedness. And it's important to understand that we don't always have control over our consciousness. Sometimes this is okay. If you're doing the dishes and you do not want to hyper-focus on the grit and grime and leftover food on your dishes, but you'd rather think about music or think about your to-do list or think about a fun conversation you had, then that's okay. You might let your mind wander while you're doing the dishes and not really pay attention to what you're doing. But sometimes this happens and we don't even realize it. Sometimes, for instance, we might be watching a movie and eating while we're eating while we're watching the movie and all of a sudden our popcorn is gone. We continue to eat, which is a very complicated thing if you think about the signals our brain has to send to our motor neurons and for our jaw and our digestive system, but we're on autopilot and we do not even notice we're eating the popcorn. We also might do lots of things that need to have intent seemingly, but we do them without intention. Like we might put our keys down in a place we don't remember. We might forget to put the cap back on our toothpaste. And when we're driving, we might go into autopilot and we might do that uh, little thing that happens where you stop at a red light and then your body just is on autopilot. So after a few seconds of stopping, you start to go again, assuming that the light has changed. And so this is an implicit consciousness. This is the idea that your mind and what's on your mind stage is actually not these things. It's not how much popcorn you ate or what's happening to the traffic light. You're thinking about whatever else you're thinking about. And so all of these things are happening in the background and happening on autopilot. Now, sometimes these things can happen because we're experiencing overstimulation. And this is the idea that our worlds are very complex and very stimulating through sights and sounds and temperatures and actions, interactions with other people. It's difficult, as mentioned, to focus on all of this. So some of it has to go. And our brain will make the decision what is the most informative and what is the most threatening and everything else gets dropped to the wayside. Even if remembering where your keys are should be informative and important, we often forget about those more mundane parts of our day.